Hello again. Somebody remarked the other day that my videos are often a little negative in tone and that I do not spend as much time talking about optimistic and positive aspects of Englishness and our race as I might. There may be something in this. Today I shall talk of one of the greatest and most successful enterprises in the history of the world. I refer, of course, to the British Empire, whose benefits visible to this day are so many and varied that it's really hard to know where to begin. Perhaps if I focus on just one part of this huge subject, then I might be able to get across a little of what I mean. When we look at modern Africa, we see cities like Nairobi, Lagos and Kampala, which have tall buildings, roads, power stations, hospitals, universities, railways and well-stocked shops. The streets are lit by electricity and there are many motor cars to be seen. These cities have airports and the standard of living in them is not all that much inferior to London or New York. Here is a very simple question. In the early 19th century, throughout much of Africa, there was famine and disease. Slavery and human sacrifice were widely practised, along with bloody tribal wars. There were no wheeled vehicles, no buildings of more than a single storey, and those that there were were built of mud and clay, and mostly lacked windows and doors. I invite viewers to join me in a little thought experiment. I want us to try and think what would have happened to Africa if the colonising nations like Britain had not moved in during the 19th century, the so-called scramble for Africa. Would aeroplanes have been independently invented there without European influence? What about power stations and mains electricity? Would that have been developed spontaneously if left to the Africans? Television? Computers? Cars? Antibiotics? My own suspicion is that none of those things would be present in Africa today had we not gone to the continent and introduced them to those living there. I think that we went to Africa and taught them how to be civilised, how to live modern lives like Europeans and Americans. Africa was a stagnant backwater of the world in the early part of the 19th century, cut off from the main currents of history. If the European nations like Britain had not turned up there when they did, I think that they would still be living in single-storey mud huts without any of the advantages of modern civilization. This is what the British Empire did for those countries. Certainly the British behaved badly at times and there was injustice, that goes without saying, but overall those countries we colonised owe all that they now have to us. What did Britain get from colonising Africa? A precious little, if you look at it from a purely financial viewpoint. The Kimberley diamond fields and golden rand were profitable enough in South Africa, but there was no financial benefit to lands like Nigeria and Uganda. Imperialism was not a money-making venture, at least not in Africa it wasn't. All that we did in Africa benefited the Africans living there rather than Britain itself. For that reason, I thought that I would read out a poem by Rudyard Kipling, which summed up the British Empire perfectly. I am a great fan of Kipling, and uh, this book travelled around the world with me. That and the Bible were my constant companions for years. The poem I want to read was originally written to mark Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, but later Kipling decided to offer Recessional instead to mark that occasion. He released White Man's Burden two years later to commemorate the American annexation of the Philippine Islands, which was, of course, part of the same process of white colonisation undertaken largely for the benefit of those whose territories were being improved. Not that they were the least bit grateful. Here is the white man's burden. Take up the white man's burden, send forth the best ye breed. 
Go bind your sons to exile to serve your captives' need. To wait in heavy harness on fluttered folk and wild, your new court sullen peoples, half devil and half child. Take up the white man's burden, impatience to abide, to veil the threat of terror and check the show of pride. By open speech and simple, a hundred times made plain, to seek another's profit and work another's gain. Take up the white man's burden, the savage wars of peace, fill full the mouth of famine and bid the sickness cease. And when your goal is nearest, the end for others sought, watch sloth and heathen, heathen folly bring all your hopes to naught. Take up the white man's burden, no tawdry rule of kings, but toil of surf and sweeper, the tale of common things. The porch ye shall not enter, the road ye shall not tread. Go make them with your living, and mark them with your dead. Take up the white man's burden, and reap his old reward. The blame of those ye better, the hate of those ye guard. The cry of hosts ye humour, are slowly toward the light. Why brought ye us from bondage, our loved Egyptian night? Take up the white man's burden, you dare not stoop to less, nor call too loud on freedom to cloak your weariness. But all ye cry or whisper, by all ye leave or do, the silent, sullen peoples shall weigh your gods and you. Take up the white man's burden, have done with childish days, the lightly proffered laurel, the easy, ungrudged praise, comes now to search your manhood through all the thankless years, cold-edged with dear-bought wisdom, the judgment of your peers. And really, that just about sums it up, to fill the mouth of famine and bid the sickness cease. That's what we did in Africa. We taught them how to be healthy, how to farm. We allowed the population to multiply. They weren't being killed off by little wars anymore or by human sacrifices. They weren't sold into slavery. That's why there are so many Africans now. The blame of those we bettered, hmm, yeah. The blame of those we bettered is indeed loud today. And the thankless years sound about right as well. Without the British Empire, cities like Lagos would be desolate swamps with a scattering of mud huts and the inhabitants prey to slavery and disease. This is worth thinking about the next time we hear people slagging off the British Empire. <laughs>